Got a smacker pig down next to our prop. I don't know that I've ever heard a stub of, well, we just say two by four, he said two by three, never called a pig. So he's gonna smack a pig down next to our prop. Oh, he said pig. This reaction video, sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates, or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, everybody, today's video is by Miter10. Now, if you watch the channel, you know we've done a video of theirs before, and what we learned from the comments section is uh, Miter10 is like a uh, home improvement store, like a big box store, similar to what you'd find like at Lowe's or Home Depot, Menards here in the States. So these videos are typically uh, slanted towards a product that they're trying to sell. So we will keep that in mind for today's video. The video is titled, How to Repair a Leaning Fence, Miter10, Easy as DIY. If you'd like to watch the full video without my commentary, we will link it in the description below. Let's go. If part of your fence is on a lean, don't worry. I'll show you an easy fix you can do yourself that'll get your fence nice and straight again. Let's do this. Before we get into their solution, why don't you leave me your solution in the comments below. What is your go-to if you get a call out to a yard, leaning fence, and, and it's not because of a warped post? Let's talk about that. So it's a leaning fence, it's leaning in the ground. How do you fix it? There's a few different reasons as to why your fence might be leaning over. Either the post is broken off below ground level, your footings are too shallow, well, one of the most common reasons for a leaning fence is that a tree has grown up on the outside of the fence, which has forced it over, which is exactly what's happened in this situation. Here in the States, my guess would be the most common reason for leaning fences is uh, bowed, warped, or twisted uh, post. Uh, you see treated pine used in a lot of privacy fences, and treated pine likes to warp, bow, and twist. Sometimes all three at the same time. Fair point on uh, also trees grow into it sometimes. Okay, now before I cut out the post, what I'm gonna do is actually support the fence. I've just cut a couple of bits of three by two here, and I'm gonna screw that to our fence. That's gonna support it when we actually remove the post. Now, great little tip is using these 10 gauge tech screws. Good thing about these, you can just use them over and over again. So we actually just wanna screw in to each one of our rails. Now, just to make sure this is nice and firm, I've just got to screw a brace to our prop. So we've just got to smack a peg down next to our prop. I don't know that I've ever heard a stub of, well, we just say two by four, he said two by three, ever called a pig. So he's gonna smack a pig down next to our prop. What's that? Oh, he said pig. What do you guys think? The caption said pig. He's going to smack a pig down next to our prop, which makes absolutely no sense. However, Brayden has a fair point that he probably said peg, and the accent makes it sound like pig. He's smacking a peg down next to our prop. That makes more sense. What did you guys hear? Now, just before we remove our post, what I want to do is just take a little bit of that topsoil off so we expose the top of the concrete. Removing some of the topsoil will make it easier for me to remove the post. So this is probably a point we're talking about, that this post was buried below grade, or the concrete ended below grade. So it looks like he had two or three inches above the top of the concrete before he got to grade, the ground level. We've done a video review in the past of a gentleman that was talking about bringing concrete above grade uh, now his, he used forms, so it was perfectly cylindrical. But in the comment section, a lot of folks bring concrete above grade and then slope it off or slope it away from the post so that the water doesn't draw there next to the post. The thinking is that you would, you would keep the ground contact off of the post, which is where rot typically happens. What say you? How do you handle it? My favorite tools of all time, the Mighty Saber Saw. This thing here absolutely loves to eat nails. We are definitely calling ours a saber saw from now on. We would call them a, a reciprocating saw. We are definitely calling them saber saws from now on. Rightio, <clears throat> now we just need to try and roll out our post. I, 
I would hazard to say the reason that this fence leaned maybe wasn't as much of the tree leaning against it as it is no concrete around the post. If there was a significant, a, a adequate amount of concrete in the post, I don't think you would just roll that post around and pull it out. Now that the post is out, time for the hard work is removing the rest of the concrete. Maybe we maybe we missed a step where he broke the concrete, or maybe that was the point. Maybe that's why it failed as the concrete footer was broken. Uh, I didn't see him break it. I thought he just dug down and then rolled the post out. So a decent amount of concrete. I take back what I said about not having concrete around it. The concrete was just broken. Now, just before we put our post in, I want to make sure that our hole is deep enough. So I'm about 450 deep, which is around about the minimum you want to be for a post hole. 30 inches deep would be the minimum to meet ASTM standards or six inches deeper than your frost line, whichever is greater. So if you live in an area that has a 40 inch frost line, 46 inches would be your depth. Now, because that I've hit solid volcanic rock down there, I've actually just gone a little bit wider on my hole. The minimum you want to be is about 300 square. So I've actually gone about 450 square just to make sure there's enough volume of concrete around that post. I'm not a huge fan of this idea though. So he didn't get the depth he wanted. Uh, so he just made the hole wider. So use roughly the same amount of concrete, just reduce the depth of the concrete. My opinion, one guy's opinion, right, is that that would be a weaker post than if it were to dug to depth. A wider puddle of concrete does not make a fence stronger simply by sheer weight. You need to anchor it. You need to anchor it. It needs to be deeper, would be my opinion. Now, I've just attached the 4 by 2 to the bottom of my existing fence post. That's just gonna give me a nice straight line. You can use a, a string line all the way if you like, but that way by me using that, I can actually just fix straight through that with another tech screw, and that's gonna hold the bottom of the post nice and straight. Okay, now it's time for us to put our brace on, and then we can put our concrete in. There is a serious amount of structure and tech screws being used on this repair. When you're a big box store and you get this stuff for free, I guess this probably is the right solution. Now that our post is in, fixed nice and securely to the bottom, we just want to make sure that that's plumb. Could have used a bigger level though. The next thing we want to do is just make sure that our existing fence is also plumb. Now, to do that, I'm going to have to release the screws on our braces because we screwed that off when the fence was out of plumb. So we'll take the screws out and push that back over into the right position. Seems like you might would have you might would have wanted might have wanted to do that step before attaching the brace work rather than attaching the bracing, unattaching it, moving it, reattaching the bracing. I would assume. Now I've pre-drilled a couple of holes at 45 degrees. That way the tim is not going to split when I put the screws in. So you want to put in at least four screws per rail. When we're installing a fence, the uh, cross rails, two by fours, would be face nailed. We face nail our pickets. Still seems like four might be a little bit excessive. For the, those of you that install your wood privacy fences or shadow box wood fences, uh, inset like this, as opposed to face nailed, um, four screws, four nails, whichever. Uh, excessive or adequate? Beauty. Now, time to throw some concrete in our hole. Obviously, Miter 10 is a big fan of wet setting, which is a discussion currently going on here in the United States. Wet set versus dry compaction versus driving. Don't want to leave out the third option. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, all we want to do is just let that set for 24 hours. Depends on the concrete. Uh, you'd want to double check that. So 24 hours for standard concrete mix would be a little quick. Typically, typically 48 hours is kind of where we'd start and that's if it hasn't rained in a while, it's nice and warm. If it's cool or damp, we'd probably give it a little bit longer. Now, there is, you know, fast setting concrete out there, which is ob obviously done quite a bit faster in a matter of hours versus days. But it looked like this was standard concrete. So 24 hours might be a little bit quick. So there we have it. We'll fix our leaning fence. Now that's gonna last 
a good while longer. All right, guys. You know the deal. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Would you have done anything differently? Would you do it the same? Let me know. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.